is it possible that an innocent ex-Marine with no criminal record could end up on death row for a heinous crime he did not commit? After being wrongfully convicted for the murder of Don Hamilton, Kirk Budsworth served two years on death row and then six more in prison before he was exonerated using DNA evidence, a first in the American judicial system. In the summer of 1984, Kirk Bloodsworth was a 22-year-old commercial fisherman in Baltimore, Maryland. He was living with his first wife when nine-year-old Don Hamilton was murdered. The victim had been playing hide-and-seek with her cousins when she was seen going into the forest with an unknown man. Her body was found soon after. It was all based on witness identification of a person they had said they saw that was described as father's six foot five, curly blonde hair, bushy mustache, tan skin, and skinny. And of course, uh, uh, that that's not true. I still just uh, wanted to lump me into this thing, and um, you know, it almost cost me my life. The boys described the murderer to the authorities. Unfortunately, they could not agree on certain features of the killer, and the two images were merged to form an even less reliable depiction of the real perpetrator. Furthermore, the boys could not actually pick Kirk out of a six-man lineup. It wasn't until the witnesses saw Kirk's picture circulated on the local news as the primary suspect that they could identify him. Now, I was arrested on a Thursday, and they held a lineup on this coming. Monday. They called all the witnesses in the case and they said, do not watch television because we have arrested the suspect. suspect. By the way, his name is Kirk Bloodsworth. So don't watch TV. Everybody in the Don Hamilton murder case watched television. Said so in court. I had no idea what the heck I was about to enter into, but this was a living nightmare of some divorce, I can tell you. Einstein said that memory is deceptive because it's colored by today's events. So whatever you saw yesterday is colored by today. Um, and I kind of agree with that to a certain extent. I mean, you know, it's uh, people get it wrong. From the moment Kirk was labeled primary suspect, no one believed his side of the story, not even his own lawyer. March 8th, 1985, Kirk Bloodsworth is sentenced to death. There is no physical evidence at the crime scene to link Mr. Bloodsworth to the murder, but that is all disregarded by the jury, intent on avenging young Don Hamilton. And I went to one of the most notorious prisons in the United States, Maryland Penitentiary at 954 Forest Street, where just two weeks before I got there, a guard had been disemboweled by an inmate from perceived insult. I did eight years, 10 months, and 19 days in a room as not big as your bathroom, uh, six by eight, I think, uh, if that, and, uh, you know, just a toilet and a sink. His cell was directly below the gas chamber, a grim fact the guards like to remind him of. Living in that environment has a mental effect on many prisoners. The whole world and the state and all it thinks you're this beautiful, brutal killer of a nine-year-old child you never met in your life. And everybody's saying, yeah, 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 but you're the only one. So that really enhances any mental issues. After serving two years on death row, Kirk went back to court because the prosecutors withheld evidence in the original trial. He was then condemned to a double life sentence. Kirk still served his time in the Maryland State Penitentiary, but he was no longer on death row. I read a book by Joseph Wombaugh called uh, The Bloody, and um, 
it was about the first time this new technology called DNA was used in a criminal case. And so that's where my epiphany came. I said, well, shoot, if it could, it's, it freed that guy and convicted the real killer. Why can't it free me? Alec Jeffries is the British geneticist who discovered and curated genetic testing and DNA profiling, both of which are now commonly used forensic techniques. DNA is now often used to prove innocence both prior to and post-conviction. There have been 367 DNA exonerations to date, the first being in 1989. Kirk Bloodsworth was the first American to be exonerated from death row using DNA evidence in 1993. Bob Moran was an attorney representing Southern Death Row inmates when he heard about Kirk's case. Paid for the DNA out of his own pocket and uh, got the test done. Without his representation and financial aid, Kirk might have never walked free. He, he said he was convinced that if we did this test, it would prove his innocence, and he was correct in that. Bob went to the courthouse to find physical evidence from the crime scene that was supposed to be archived. Unfortunately, the garments were said to have been missing or destroyed. It's in the judge's closet, in a paper bag, sitting in the floor, in a cardboard box. Paper bag, in a cardboard box, in the judge's closet. And that was my key to my freedom. Bob paid for the biological evidence to be identified by one of the top geneticists in the country. Unfortunately, the sample was very small. Less than a dime's worth, about the size of the dime, just, um, piece of biological evidence. If for some reason the test was inconclusive or anything went wrong, Kirk's last chance for freedom would be lost. It took us a year for the test results to get back. And uh, lo and behold, I was, uh, what I had been saying to folks was true. The DNA was not mine. Kirk is released from prison after 8 years, 10 months, and 19 days at the Maryland State Penitentiary. Many friends and family members of Kirk's were overjoyed at his release. Unfortunately, not all of the response was so positive. Kirk would get calls from angry skeptics who threatened his life, believing that DNA evidence was a hoax. Ten years after Kirk's release from prison, his name was finally cleared. The DNA pointed to the real killer, Kimberly J. Ruffner. Kirk and Ruffner had been acquaintances in prison, but he had never let on that he was responsible for Kirk's imprisonment. After his release, Kirk chose a career in activism to help other innocent prisoners. He played a large role in the repeal of the Maryland death penalty in 2013, 20 years after his release. Kirk continues to lobby for the abolishment of the death penalty everywhere and supports exonerated prisoners with his work at Witness to Innocence. So Witness to Innocence is the only national organization in the United States that is by, run by and for death row exonerees. Kirk also tours all over the country and delivers speeches about his experience to schools and organizations. There's a, a, a federal law that establishes the Kirk Bloodsworth post-conviction DNA testing program. The program allots grants to help with the cost of post-conviction genetic testing for inmates who may not otherwise be able to afford it. Vermont Senator Patrick Leahy has been a strong advocate for the repeal of the death penalty across the country. Kirk Bloodsworth is here from Maryland, and they're going to tell you firsthand the innocent people get wrongly convicted across the country. Uh, Kirk Bloodsworth was the first person freed from death row as a result of DNA testing. The first person. Kirk Bloodsworth spent eight years, ten months, and 19 days in prison for a crime he did not commit. His case broke scientific and legal barriers and paved the way for many more life-saving legal cases.